Hey everyone, so I just wanted to make a quick addendum to the last video because I had a couple of issues that I've since resolved and I wanted to make sure that I addressed those. So the issue that I mainly had was that when I first turned on the controller, it, the motor wouldn't spin. So if I were to turn on the, the power using the key switch, then engage the contactor and then turn the, um, the throttle, the motor would not spin. But if I were to turn it off and then turn it back on again, then I would never have any issues. And I noticed that it would be like 35 minutes. If I turned it back on within 35 minutes of, of turning it off, it would work. If not, then it wouldn't work on the first try. So what I learned was that the controller needs to have the right voltage at the B plus and B minus terminals for it to engage, which makes sense. Uh, you know you want enough voltage so i was getting a low voltage fault even though the battery was connected and the issue was that i had the pre-charge resistor on a relay previously so the pre-charge resistor would not engage unless i turned the key and i thought that was a you know kind of a clean solution because you wouldn't have power to the controller at all when you turn the key off but the issue was that it takes a little bit of time to bleed off the charge and the capacitors from the controller. So what would happen is I would turn the key on, the pre-charge resistor would engage, the controller would turn, turn on um, instantaneously, but it would take some time for the voltage to build up in the controller through the pre-charge resistor. So at the instant the controller turned on and tried to check the voltage, the voltage would be low and I would have to wait like maybe up, uh, upwards of 20 seconds before the voltage built up to a level where the motor would actually run. So uh, what I did was just get rid of the relay. So I got rid of the pre-charge resistor relay and now the pre-charge resistor is just hard uh, wired to the contacts. So these are the pre-charge resistor leads, the two small ones, and they go, go directly to the pre-charge resistor. So whether the controller is on or off, there's still a path through the pre-charge resistor to maintain the voltage on the controller. So now when I turn the controller on and then engage the contactor, the motor spins right away. So I don't have any issues. And there's really no downside to doing it that way. Um, I just thought it would be clean to have the controller not receive any voltage from the battery when I turned the key switch off. That's why I had the relay there, but there's really no downside to having the pre-charge resistor connected full time. And I also heard that the voltage helps keep the capacitors in good shape over, over time, but I'm not sure how that, you know, what difference that actually makes. Uh, the other change I made was to get rid of the battery here. Previously, I had a second 12 volt battery that would provide the initial power to run the solid state relay when I turn everything on. And that meant that I had two separate power sources. The battery was, well, um, once the, once the pre-charge resistor was engaged, that turned on the DC to DC converter and the DC-DC converter would come back around and charge the battery through a diode. So in that way, I kind of had a similar system to what you would have in a regular car with a 12 volt lead acid battery and an alternator to charge it. But now I found this um, basically AC power supply. So it can take between 100 and uh, 265 volts and it converts it down to 12 volts DC. These are meant for, this is meant for AC, but it also works for DC. Uh, it just uses a rectifier. To be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure why it works, but I've seen this solution used. If you guys know, just leave a message in the comments. Let me know why it's possible to use a, basically a buck converter that's made for AC with DC voltage. So there you have it. So now it's a much more, simple system. The key switch is upstream of this power supply. So the key switch is actually attached directly to the battery to engage or disengage current to this power supply. And that's okay because the current here is extremely low. Even though the key switch uses these very thin wires, 
the current going through this at 96 volts is less than an amp. So it's not an issue at all to have the key switch connected directly. I don't need a relay or anything like that. And that's pretty much it. So if you were having those issues, I hope this video was helpful and uh, please like and subscribe. I'll have more videos shortly.